Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with some first thoughts on Metroid Dread. Uh, this game released, I think, two days ago? Yeah, it says right there on the 8th. Uh, basically, yeah, it's, it's Metroid. Um, it is the first 2D Metroid game to be released in 19 years, according to this paragraph here. That's not quite accurate. Uh, it does say first new 2D Metroid adventure because uh, the, the 3DS got a game called Metroid Samus Returns. Uh, which was a remake of Metroid 2 for the Game Boy, but it was such an expanded remake that I think it was effectively a, a new game. So really, this is the first new 2D Metroid game in about five years, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, Samus Returns is great. Um, as you can see, my 3DS is a Samus 3DS. I got Samus Returns with it, um, and it's fantastic. Uh, basically, if you're not familiar with Metroid, it's a space adventure series. Uh, side, like a side-scrolling exploration sort of thing. The play is this woman here, Samus Aran. She is a bounty hunter in a cool suit of power armor. She's also a trans lesbian. I love her so much. And yeah, this game, it was made by the same people who worked on Samus Returns, so it's going to be probably very similar, uh, but it is a new game rather than a remake of an existing game. Uh, I haven't played it at all yet. All I know is that the same people worked on it and it looked very similar in the trailers and stuff, but uh, we're going to jump in and see. <laughs> uh, there was no demo for this game, unfortunately. Uh, there was one for the WarioWare game I played a little while ago, but this one, you just got to buy it. Um, based on what I know about Thomas Returns and people have told me about this game, I'm expecting to love it, but, <laughs> you know, fingers crossed. Metroid Dread. Title screen. Press A. Just brightness until the image on the left is barely visible. About... About there it's right for the screen. Um, it's a bit a little too bright over there, but I'm going to be looking over here. Hopefully this isn't too bright during the game for you, for you viewers. We'll see. So sure. uh, we get three save slots, or Samus Files, as the game calls them. <laughs> Metroid, a virulent floating organism that drained energy from its prey through physical contact. Metroids were originally created by the Chozo and named after their word for Ultimate Warrior. The value as a bioweapon sparked several crises, and as a result, all traces of them have been eliminated. They are now extinct. So yeah, that's a Metroid in the background there. Samus is not Metroid, she is Samus. The Metroids are the... kind of the villains? Not really, like, they just want to eat. Um, they're not su they're, they're mostly not that intelligent. They're not, like, scheming to defeat Samus or anything. X-Parasite, a gelatinous parasitical organism indigenous to the planet SR388. It could absorb the DNA of its host, living or dead, and replicate its form. When infecting a living host, it could even access the host's memories. X-Parasites were driven not by emotion, but by an instinctive need to replicate and spread to increasingly stronger hosts. The inability to be controlled marked them as even more dangerous than their sole predator, the Metroids. Like the Metroids, they believed extinct. Uh, the X-Parasite is from Metroid Fusion, which is a Game Boy Advance game. Uh, in that one, Samus is infected by the X-Parasites at the beginning. She gets vaccinated against them using Metroid uh, te technology or whatever. Uh, and then after that, X-Parasites become basically power-ups she can absorb throughout the game. Uh, I'm, I guess they're in this game too. <laughs> pew pew pew! I think we may be seeing the same scene from Metroid Fusion I just mentioned, where Samus is infected by the X parasites in the beginning. Yeah. With no Metroid surviving on SR388, it became infested with the X, horrifying parasite capable of imitating any living being. Unaware of this, I set foot on the planet, got infected, and almost died. So, yeah, this is the part from Fusion that I just mentioned. <laughs>
The only thing that saved me was a vaccine created from Metroid DNA. It also left me uniquely able to oppose the X. This ability was tested immediately when I went to, to a biologic space laboratory, BSL, research station to investigate a distress signal. There, I battled many powerful X forms, including the SAX, which was the X mimicking me in my power suit at full strength. I eventually eliminated the X Mercs on SR388 by setting the BSL research station on a collision course with the planet. Uh, spoilers for Metroid Fusion, I guess? Because, <laughs> yeah, this happens in Metroid Fusion. <laughs> uh, just a note the SAX, it's a very, uh, Battle Line Celeste sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's like a dark reflection of Samus because he's trans as fuck. It's great. <laughs> After that, the X and Metroids were just memories, or so we thought. When it seemed all seemed over, the Galactic Federation received a mysterious video transmission. <gasps> it showed an X, alive and in the wild. Our analysis, our analysis proved the video was real. Although the sender was unknown, transmission was traced to a particular planet. It was called ZDR. The X had somehow escaped extinction out there that would pose a threat to the entire galaxy. The Galactic Federation dispatched a research team of seven EMMI to investigate. EMMI is a large research robot designed to capture field samples and extract their DNA. Their incredible mobility and protective plating may have the strongest stuff in the universe. Whatever it is. And you're not going to tell specifically. Practically guaranteed the mission's success. Not long after their arrival on ZDR, all communication was lost. What is happening on ZDR? Is the planet really infested with X? It's the only one immune to the parasite. It's up to me to go there and find out. Okay, so yes, this is a direct sequel to Metroid Fusion, which is interesting because that game came out about how long ago? It's been a while. Uh, 2002. Um, and it's now. Yeah, 2021, and we're getting a direct sequel to a game from 2002. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, Fusion was criticized for being a bit more linear than the other Metroid games. Uh, generally, you know, the genre is called Met. Oh. Voice acting. Uh, generally, like, uh, the genre is called Metroidvania, and you explore, like... Does not seem appropriate. You, you explore, like, a, um, a world based on grabbing new upgrades that let you get to more parts of the world, rather than having a, a linear path of doors that get unlocked as you progress, that kind of thing. Um, Fusion, you're basically told where to go by your ship's computer for the whole game. Um... And there were, it got a lot of criticism for that reason, because you have to do things in a certain order and it's very hard to sequence break. Whereas a game like Metroid Zero Mission, uh, which released a bit later, also on the Game Boy Advance, that one is more non-linear. Uh, you're supposed to do things in a certain order, but you do not have to, and there's a lot of possible sequence breaking and fun stuff like that. I don't know if Dread's going to be more similar to Fusion or more similar to Zero Mission, we'll see. But we are playing as... Uh, the Samus who just did Metroid Fusion, so probably she'll have similar abilities. That elevator leads to the depths of an underground facility. Signal quality is likely to be low. Remote communication remains useful. Try to connect to the facility's network when you reach the bottom. That way, can remain in contact. Any objections, please? Okay. 
Okay, so the computer that's saying any objections, lady, that's the same one from Fusion. Um, it's a bit annoying. Uh, that character wasn't too obnoxious in Fusion, but they also appeared in a game called Metroid Other M. And that game was widely panned for being really, really fucking misogynistic. Um, because, yeah, Samus is our female protagonist here, and her commanding officer is this dude who is a dick. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too bad in Fusion. Uh, even, is, even though it is the same character, it didn't bother most players too much. It didn't bother me too much, I've replayed Fusion very recently. Okay, so that's the EMMI robot, I assume. It's now attacking us. It's like a bird face. I, I guess it's based on Chozo technology. The, the Chozo were like ancient bird people. They were mentioned in the intro. Uh, they raised Samus. She has like Chozo abilities because she was raised by bird people. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet, by the way. This is all cutscene. Um, most Metroids tend to have like a little bit of cutscene at the start, but then some gameplay before long. <laughs> this is more than I'm used to. Uh... Hmm? Okay, I can play now. Uh... Samus apparently did not just die, uh, even though it looked like she was dying. So yeah, um, this is the standard sort of side-scrolling Metroid. Uh, you can move with the analog stick. D-pad seems to do things with the map. I'll probably do some other things later. Uh, I have a slide move I can do with ZL. Uh, holding L lets me aim in different directions. Uh, this was a feature in Samus Returns as well. Uh, it's notable because most 2D Metroid games were on like the Game Boy Advance or the NES or the SNES. Uh, and so you didn't have, like, 360-degree aiming, you just had, like, uh, straightforward, straight-up, and diagonals. So it's a bit of an improvement. Uh... Yep, I have missiles. Um, generally you have unlimited regular energy attacks and a, a small number of missiles to start with, but that number goes up as you find more missile tanks throughout the game. Uh, it does nothing. X... Ah, yeah, this is also a move from Samus Returns, this little... Uh, melee kicky thing. Uh, basically, if you do that at the right time, uh, you can make enemies vulnerable. Uh, it was introduced in Samus Returns. You, you whack them like this when they, like, I think they flash or something like that. You hit your enemies and then they become more vulnerable to attack and you can just beat them up. We can't go in here yet. I assume we need a better weapon. Uh, Samus... Oh, hey, look at that. I can aim a little bit uh, just using the analog stick without actually pressing the this button. Actually, I think I have pretty good control of where I aim. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay. Okay, so the enemies are dropping like normal sorts of stuff. Um, in Metroid Fusion, all of the enemies were X parasites in different forms. So when you killed them, they turned back into the little floaty blobs and you could pick up the blobs. Uh, here they're dropping just separate energy and missile and stuff, like in a more conventional Metroid. Okay, we've already got the ability to grab. Oop. Ow. A little bit of damage there. Uh, you can see in the corner there, E889. That's my estrogen level. <laughs> it starts at 99, and I'll get more estrogen tanks as we progress. I'm joking, it's actually energy, but... You can see where I'm going for there. <laughs> Uh, okay, so a little bit of a tutorial area here. Oh, hello, what's this? Oh, that's a refill station. Hold R to ready missiles, press Y to fire. Yep. Some destructible blocks are hidden. If you run into it and try shooting at your surroundings, striking some blocks with missiles may show, reveal how to destroy them. Yep, that's a pretty standard Metroid thing. Ow. Cutscene. Yeah, we're probably about to get some sort of upgrade. This might be a map or something. Uploading data. Um, 
access to network station. Well done, Samus. I have reviewed your vital signs and video log from the data you uploaded. Hey, Adam. Uh, again, with the fusion spoilers, the fact that uh, your computer is Adam is revealed at the very end of Metroid Fusion. <laughs> uh, it, it's, kind, it's kind of easy to guess because Samus keeps talking about Adam, who was never mentioned before, uh, in like monologues and stuff, and it's like, oh, I wonder if the only other speaking character in this game might be the person that she keeps talking about. But yeah, the computer, the computer is like a digitized version of Adam's personality, uh, which is why he says things like, any objections, lady? That's apparently his catchphrase. I don't know. I've run a full analysis, but I cannot account for why you lost consciousness. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. Uh, hopefully Adam's not too bad in this game. Again, I mentioned he's not bad in Fusion, he's dreadful in Other M. That game is absolutely awful. Quad Eberkowski's changes seems to have stripped you of most abilities. You might call it physical amnesia. Oh, oh, okay. I got my abilities reset at the start of the game. Like in a Metroid game. <laughs> uh, Samus almost always starts without any of the abilities she normally would have. Um, so this is normal fare for a Metroid game. Uh, it's notable that Metroid Prime, uh, at the start of the game, you actually do play for a little bit with your abilities before you lose them. Um, it just gives you like a taste of the stuff Samus will be able to do later on, but most Metroid games you just start with nothing. <laughs> That brings me to your assailant. I am checking the Federation database against your video lock. It appears to have been a Chozo. The attacker's identity is not yet clear. Yeah, it did look like a Chozo, I noticed. Determined that you are somewhere within the depths of ZDR. Your top priority should be to return to your ship on the surface. This situation is precarious. Trust your instincts as you navigate upward. This planet appears to consist of multiple areas. Shuttles, elevators, and other modes of transport connect them. Keep an eye out for ways to reach the surface. The ship's location is marked on your global map. Check it for yourself. You may encounter pockets of low temperature. Your Metroid DNA renders you vulnerable to such environments. Spending time in cold areas will be harmful to you. Yeah, um, Metroids are weak to cold. In, stand like, traditional Metroid games, the... In, in the older Metroid games, like Metroid, Metroid and Super Metroid and stuff, you would get either ice missiles or an ice beam in order to freeze them and damage them. Uh, in Metroid Fusion, you can't get the ice beam because Samus is now part Metroid because of the vaccine, and integrating the beam into her suit would freeze her. Uh, but you do get ice missiles, which are, I guess, isolated in some way. And yeah, um, Metroid Fusion is a game about a girl getting poked with a needle that makes her softer and weaker and susceptible to cold. <laughs> there are many such cold areas scattered underground. Do not enter them with your basic power suit. I assume we'll get like the Varia suit or something and get some protection from cold. Ground interference is preventing radio transmissions. Check in with me at any network stations you find. Okay, so yes, I'll have to save my progress. Uh, plus trump in the map. Okay, that's interesting. We're in Artaria. Okay, so yeah, this is a pretty standard sort of Metroid map. It's less grid-based than some of the older games. Like, you can see it's going a little bit all over the place, but... The basic idea is more or less the same. Uh, minus trump in the options. What do we got? Uh, brightness, rumble, I can turn it off. I don't think I want to. It's, um, it's like Switch. This, is, this game's designed for the Switch, so the rumble is pretty decent. Uh, you can't feel it, of course, because I'm the one holding the controller, but... Okay, we can see what the controls are, but we can't change them, apparently. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, I think scanning an amiibo gives you a bit more missiles and stuff, like it's a, an ammo refill. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it could be worse. Uh, Nintendo have done much worse, like, uh, monetization schemes for games that you have to buy, uh, than that. No, if missiles would open that. Oh, hello. Use a melee counter at the right moment to parry certain attacks and automatically take aim at the attacker. Press X to use your melee counter now. Yeah, so basically when the enemy glows, you go whoosh, and then you can just mash the Y button to shoot them a lot. It, exactly the same as in Samus Returns. Uh, it was a major part of that game too. 
Yeah, you can see they have like a little gold ring around them. If, if you hit the button at that time, that, that parries them correctly. Okay. We will get a lot more like abilities as we progress. Samus is at her like weakest state right now. We'll get really good at stuff as we go on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly what upgrades are in this game, they're often a bit different. Oh, dash melee, that's new. Uh, in Samus Returns you just had the regular melee count, you did not have this one. So that's nice. I'm guessing the first thing we'll get is the Morph Ball, because we haven't got that yet, and that's like a theory staple. Uh, but maybe we'll get something else. I don't know, we can already slide under gaps, so we may not need the Morph Ball. We'll see how we go. The on the map is blinking and indicates a hidden item is there. Oh, okay. Uh, in previous games it would show like a, a little filled in circle on the map, because it's like a grid based thing. Um, and then when you find the hidden item the circle becomes unfilled in, and that's how you know that the hidden item is being collected. It looks like they've adjusted that because it's not really as grid-based as it used to be. Hidden item? Missile tank acquired. Missile capacity increased by two. Neat. Uh, oh, we can't actually go back that way yet. We're stuck on this side now. Oh. Uh, hello. I see a door. This is one of those robots that the Federation sent, I assume. Oh my god. Oh, I probably can't damage them, I just have to run away. Kind of like the SAX. The SAX is um, a lot more powerful though, because it's silenced at her full upgradedness. It'll just shoot you and you'll just die if you get too close. Oh, what have we here? Oh, some sort of upgrade? Oh! The energy from the central unit transformed the arm cannon into an omega cannon. Omega, omega blaster online. Hold LT. Oh, I see. Okay, so I can I have a charge beam now? Sort of. It's it's a bit like a charge beam, but a little different. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's not showing up as an upgrade. It's like a special thing. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I lost my Omega Cannon. Oh, it's like a temporary power-up you get just so you can take out the robot. But you did an offline. Okay, I see. It's kind of like, uh, there's a power-up in, uh, Metroid Prime Hunters, which I think had a similar name, Omega Cannon, something like that, uh, which you get at the end of the game and, and you just use it for the final boss and it, it doesn't work anywhere else. In the multiplayer mode, there's like a collectible that gives it to you, uh, and like, you know, you want to compete with the other players to get it, that kind of thing. Metro Prime Hunters is more of an FPS than really an adventure-y sort of game, but yeah, it's kind of like that. Okay. Oh right, now I can go this way because I broke that stuff earlier. That makes sense. What's this? 
the save room or something else? The save room. Neat. Didn't know what save rooms looked like in this game yet. I jump around a bit because you can see it's filling in the map in the corner there. There we go. It is a shame that the Switch doesn't have two screens, uh, because one of the really nice things about Samus Returns is that the bottom screen of the 3DS always showed the map nice and big. I suppose this mini-map isn't too bad, but it, it was nice. It was a nice feature. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's nice. That, that's cool. Okay, we've got a, a weird door. Not, I'm not sure what's happening here. It's like all film grainy? Is that like a time door? What just happened? Oh dear. Oh dear, there's a bad and naughty robot. I like that they've leaned a little deep, like further into the horror side of things. Um, like, this, this has always been inspired by Alien, but it was a lot less spooky in previous games. And I think it's an interesting uh, shift that they've focused in on that a little bit more than they used to. Uh... Okay. Okay, I'm back in the non-film grain world. I guess I'm okay. That was kind of scary. <laughs> Missile, thank you. <laughs> Love to get more missiles. Oh, what's this? This is something different. Oh, I think this is a chatting with Adam room. Uploading data. Hey, dude. Both any you encountered were clearly trying to capture you. They may have been hacked. If so, it's reasonable to assume all any will be possible. Oh, they pronounced Emmy? Okay. Emmy sent out a pulse to detect vibrations in the air within a upon detecting vibrations. An Emmy enters surveillance mode to track their source. Stay out of its line of sight when this happens. Otherwise, the danger to you increases dramatically. Right, so it's very similar to the SAX. Emmy that has seen you will begin pursuit. Part of the pursuit protocol is to seal the Emmy zone exits. You will be trapped inside to survive. You must leave its range of pursuit. The baby Emmy and it will disengage. This oh, okay. So the the weird fuzzy door with our Emmy zone. Emmy never leaves its assigned zone. Their control system must permit them to operate only within that range. Wasn't the first one not in a zone? I estimate a 99% probability of death if an Emmy captures you. There may be a very small opportunity to escape, but exploiting this window will be virtually impossible. The Emmy are immune to your current weapons. You lack the unique energy used to defeat the first Emmy. Your only option now is to evade capture and find an exit. Your highest priority in an Emmy zone should be simply to survive. Yep, turn progress. Interestingly, uh, we haven't gotten any upgrades yet. Like, we found some missile tanks. Uh, but if you look over here, this is like the default stuff. Uh, generally by now you'd have gotten at least the Morph Ball, which we don't have yet. Uh, but we haven't gotten anything, actually. I'm turning open this door. I can't actually go in there because it's, like, up a little slope. So I've got to go this way.
And I can't reach that yet because I don't have the morph ball. Uh, I think I can go down here now though. What's this? Oh, I think that's an energy refill. Which is nice to have, but I have full energy so I don't need it. Nemesis starts out being not very good at jumping underwater. Chances are we'll get a gravity suit uh, later in the game because we keep seeing a lot of water and that just makes you move normally in water basically. Okay, we can't get up there yet because we need the morph ball. Imagine we'll be getting the morph ball pretty soon because we keep seeing things where we need it. Safe room? Safe. Okay, that's, that's an estrogen tank up there. We can't get that yet. But uh, again, once we have the morph ball, we can reach it. Oh, I uh, missile tank. I want that. Oh, I don't think I can go up there yet. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the longest I've gone in a Metroid game without being actually given any upgrades. It's interesting. I think I did that because I wanted to lean a little deeper into like the horror side of things. But this game is, is creeping me out. And you know, it's called Metroid Dread. Like, they probably wanted to scare me a little bit. <laughs> Judging from the naming scheme. Oh, what's this? Okay, those are Chozo in the background. I'm guessing this is an upgrade of some kind. Oh, it's a map room, I think. Yeah, it's gonna map out the area for me, so I know what rooms exist. Okay. Area map downloaded. Take in progress, yes. On the map, the yellow rooms are saving facilities. The purple room contains transportation devices. So, much like in Samus Returns, you have uh, teleporters that take you to different parts of the map. Chances are it's the same sort of thing where you have to unlock them first, fast travel style. And then you can go there whenever you want. Oh, uh, hello. Mind you. <laughs> yeah, the ideal way to attack those guys is probably to counter their melee, but I didn't do that. Missile tank acquired. Good stuff. It's weird that, it, that uh, the map is on plus. I expect it to be on minus, but it's, it's not. It's, it's on plus instead. Oh god, another, another Emmy zone. Let's go. Oh god, I'm so scared. That thing. Is that an enemy? Ah! Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, it's, it saves before the enemy zone automatically by looking things. Which is nice. This way. Oh god. I'm so scared. <laughs> it, the running from the SAX was an important part of the previous game, but it was also like a minor part of that game. Here it seems to be a very uh, significant part of the game. <laughs> and I'm very afraid. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Press the button again? Or just... Yeah, I think so. Oh no? Yes, let's go. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, we're out. Oh, that was scary. Is this an upgrade? Oh, I think it was just a refill. Right? Hang on. Energy recharge station. Yeah. It's still nice to have, but it's still not an upgrade. Uh, we can't go through there. So maybe we get something that lets us go through there. Is that a missile door? Find out. Yep. Okay, I assumed the game would have missile doors, but I didn't know what they would look like. Because they look different in different games. <gasps> Upgrade! What is it? Charge beam! Oh, yes. Lovely. Oh, finally. Okay, got the charge beam. Oh, it's been, yeah, I know, I know how the charge beam works. Oh, that's neat. You get like a screw attack kind of thing by charging up the beam. I like that. Okay. I would have preferred the morph ball, but getting anything is nice. So. <laughs> oh, energy. Yes. Give me that. Give me that tank. Give me that estrogen, let's go. Estrogen tank acquired. Energy capacity increased by 100. You can see next to the little E with the 99, there's now like a little bar there. Yeah, that's an extra tank. So when I run out of 99, it'll give me another set. Oh, that's neat. I've been charged up and just jump over someone and mess them up. Not sure which way I want to go. I think if I just keep going this way, that's probably fine. There we go. Hopefully, I'll get more tele like access to teleporters and I can walk around a bit soon. Let's see how that goes. Also, yeah, I'm not super great at Metroid games, so I'm going to be taking quite a bit of damage as we progress. <laughs> uh, can do in here? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I think we want to go back down this way, actually, and see if we can do anything over here. Yeah, that we haven't been through the, the end of that room yet. That's a power beam door. Missile cover. Yeah, but I think we want to go over there. Fine, we can do that. Uh, 
Yeah, I think we're good this way. Enjoying how fast Samus is in this game. She's generally a little bit slower until you end up getting the power boost or whatever and you go real real fast. Okay, so we can just go back up here. Ow. And then we can go... This way. Oh! Oh, that's a cold room. Okay, we don't want to go in a cold room. Uh, let's see, where else can we go? We can go this way? Go this way already? Yeah, we did. Oh right, I got stuck here. Yeah, I think I can go through here, yeah. Oh yeah, there's like cold coming off the door, so you know it's going to be cold on the other side. I see. I see how it works. For some reason this side of the room is not cold. <laughs> Which is helpful for me, of course. Um, yeah, I, I guess we want to go this way. I can't really jump high enough to fill in that whole map. It's a shame. Hello. Okay, I don't know what the timing is on these tacks yet. Hello. There we go, that's the way you do it. I'm not sure where the game, like, intends me to go next, basically. I'll be back into one of the Emmy, jo Emmy zones and get all scared. Oh, the map shows you things you've already acquired. That's really helpful, actually. I'll just keep track of, like, what you've achieved is nice. Okay, I can't jump up there, but I can under here. Hello. there until I get like a high jump or something. Well generally you know, an upgrade that makes you jump a lot higher, but I don't know when I'll get it. I can't go that way, but I can't go this way. This is where the first enemy was, the one that I defeated with the Omega Beam. Um Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's anything I missed here. There's not a lot of other places you can go. I can't go back up there. Door I can break through from with the charge. Go somewhere new. Oh no. <laughs> uh, oh.
What is bulkhead doors for? I don't know what opens it yet. Oh, it won't tell me until I find out what item I need. Map won't tell me either. Interesting. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh jeez. I'm glad it checkpoints you just before you enter the enemy zone, because, oh my god. Go up that way? Doesn't look like it. Gotta go this way. Oh no, 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 no. I'm afraid. Oh god. I've been here before. Hello. I haven't got timing on that. Very weird. Okay, there we go. That's how you do it. Oh yeah, this door can be charged again. Okay. Go this way. Missile tank, yeah. <laughs> and there's a bulkhead over here. Um, I can break my way through the ceiling. Here we go. I really like the charge beam screw attack, that's really cool. I like that effect a lot. Also, this game is gorgeous, uh, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> oh, oh, that room's hot, which is also bad for Samus. So go in there. Okay, I got back to more energy. Uh... Oh, okay, we're full health again. And your little trick that. Oh, what's this? Yellow room, is this saving? I think it's saving. Not sure why they have these, like, relatively long cutscenes for all the save rooms and stuff like that. It seems unnecessary. Upgrade? Is it an upgrade? What am I looking at? What's this? The thermal fuels flow. Oh, the room won't be hot anymore. I assume. Oh, the bulkheads are open. Is that all the bulkheads or just like some of them? No idea.
actually makes navigating a bit easier. I have all these bulkheads open. Oh, I see. They're siphoning off the, like, fuel from the volcano, basically. That's cool. Oh, which I mean, it's not. Is the hot room still hot? The hot room's still hot. Don't go in the hot room. Ah, that room is hot as well. Don't go in there either. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, that room's still sealed. Yeah, we just gotta go through where some bulkheads were, basically, I think. Here. You see your door? I guess so. Okay, so I'm going to backpack this way now. Oh, this bulkhead is not open. Oh, I need, oh, hang on, I need to talk to, talk to Adam and then it'll open all the doors. Okay. <laughs> there was no record of your assailant in the Federation database. However, there are records of a chosen warrior tribe. There is a strong possibility that you are connected. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. You have seen the warrior tribe's architecture and artifacts on this planet. I conclude that this was one of their settlements. But why would someone lead you here and send the Emmy after you? The footage of the X Parasite may have been staged to lure you in. We haven't seen an X Parasite when we got here, so yeah. The situation yeah. remains unclear, but your priority hasn't changed. You must return to the ship. You have activated the Magna Supply System that has restored power to the closed thermal doors. Seek them out to proceed. Yeah, I know. You to search for the unique energy you employed against the first Emmy. It is the only way you can confront them. Unfortunately, this energy is limited. You may have noticed it dissipating after an Emmy is destroyed. There are six remaining Emmy hunting you. You have no means to confront them. Remember that. Okay, now the thermal door is open. Okay. Breath. Oh god. <laughs> Almost immediately. <laughs> oh, I am not good at evading these things. I've taken a wrong turn and accidentally gone backwards. Hang on, this is the thermal door. Maybe I can get to do this way. Oh! I got pinball machined. <laughs> okay. Oh, cutscene. Oh, it's this thing. I've been seeing this show up when I went to the Emmy Zones earlier. Do I need missiles or I have them? Okay, missiles do work. Oh! 
Hello. That is super gross. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the ability again by scanning this brain. I'll get my Omega Cannon. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right. Did I miss something? Taking any damage. I'm missing. I get it. Okay. Spider Magnet acquired. Okay. Blue Magic serves. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, this area is no longer scary because I defeated the ME. But also, we can climb on this blue stuff. Do -do -do. here now because it's not scary anymore and it's like well we can hang out here
I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do now. It's a lot less scary now that there isn't an instant death robot in here. sooner than it does. There we go. Oh, door's just outright broken. Okay. Yeah, I can't get through there without the morph ball, I'm pretty sure. I can't do anything in the Emmy zone right now. Actually, I can't get out of the Emmy zone. I'm trapped down here. So I do have to stay here and do something in this zone. this, which seems like that's important. Not really sure why, but... but... That thing does damage me? Oh, hang on. It parked itself there? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure what to make of that. That gets you back to here. And that door is definitely disabled for some reason. And I can't get over there where the missile is because even if you shoot the wall there, you can get over there. It doesn't help me. Uh, M confusion. Hmm. Another blue wall somewhere I haven't I've forgotten about that I can use to get I couldn't I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. Oh I'm I'm a little bit lost. Uh a bunch of missiles out of that guy. Something.
that doesn't do anything. Wait. I, no, I can't jump up there, that's right. What does the game want me to do? Pretty sure that's the only one that can break. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was tricked. Okay, I've moved that. Oh, okay, there's another exit this way. Alright. Alright, alright, we're back. We're back. <laughs> oh, and that connects to here. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, blow that open. Now I can connect those parts together. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, sorry about that. <laughs> um. Oh, hello. Take that nerd. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, cutscene. There are a lot, seem to be a lot of cutscenes in this game. Got a Chozo statue, probably? Yeah, that's Chozo. Oh, hu hello. You bones, you have any face punch? No, what are you bones? Oh, I see. If you get your tail stuck, I can then shoot you from over here. Hmm. Ow! Oh, it sticks around. I didn't realize it did that. Your face is vulnerable to missiles. Right. Hello. Oh, did I beat you? Oh, round two. Oh, you're invisible now. Sort of. A bit. Oh no, you're very invisible. Oh, oh never mind. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I did it wrong. Missiles, please.
Oh, oh no. <sighs> okay, let's give that another shot. Go again. You reckon skip the cutscene? Yep. A better idea of what I'm doing this time, so hopefully I will take a bit less damage. one. Then they go a bit invisible and we have to shoot the tail. I'm guessing we need missiles or a charge beam. again. Did I beat you? Oh, that was very cool. That last part was a cup scene, I wasn't pressing any buttons. Cube in there? I've got a cube. Phantom cloak quite yeah, so invisibility, which is what the, the monster was just Yeah, that makes sense. Upgrading suit for Aeon compatibility. 
An aerial ability that renders Samus invisible to enemies for refracting light, she can also move silently, albeit at slower speed. With full A on, press the right stick to activate and deactivate. Uh, so, uh, Samus Returns had this too. There were a number of abilities that used your uh, A on power meter. Uh, and this is one of them. And this is probably really good, given this game has a heavy, heavy focus on stealthing around a lot. So, cool. I think we need to use it to sneak through these doors. Uh, because, like, they seal when they see Samus coming. Yeah, so we just walk through like this, we can get through. <laughs> What's the sticky ceiling here for? Can we do anything? Can't really get to that. Hmm. Maybe sticky ceiling help. Okay, it's been a bit over an hour. I should probably start wrapping up. Um, this game great. <laughs> what is that thing? I still need to get rid of that thing in order to get past it. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. Um, I think it's interesting that they delay giving me any abilities for such a long time. Uh, compared to, you know, more conventional sample, like Metroid games. I don't have a Morph Ball yet, which is really rare. Um, Morph Ball is usually like the first thing you get, and I still don't have it. And I've been playing for, you know, over an hour at this point. Which makes, which is very interesting. Um, I'd, I'd like to have a Morph Ball, because it's a good ability, but uh, I guess you get it later. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, this game, good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I think if you like Samus Returns, or generally you like the conventional, like, side-scrolling Metroid genre, uh, the game looks super good. <laughs> yeah, save point. Uh, I think that's about all I've got to say about it so far. Uh, it doesn't seem to have Nintendo's weird, fake, predatory design decisions like a lot of their more recent games have had on, on the Switch. Which is something that does constantly bother me. Um, it does have the, you know, use an amiibo option, but I'm pretty sure all that does... Yeah, it gives Samus extra resources to replenish a random amount of energy on missiles. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Like, that's not really relevant to the game at all. So... I'm not too bothered by it being there. I, I don't also don't care about it being there, but... Uh... Like, it doesn't add anything, but it doesn't really remove anything either, if that makes sense. Oh, it's gonna bug me forever. I can't clear all the corners of these rooms until I get, like, a jump upgrade. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, yeah. So, yeah, this is, a uh, Metroid Dread. It's a lot of fun. And especially, like, if you liked Fusion or Samus Returns, I think it's probably a game you want to play. Uh... It's also, yeah, it hasn't really done the sort of linear thing that uh, Samus Returns did, nor the linear thing that Fusion did. They did different linear things, because uh, Samus Returns was based on Metroid 2, which had, like, levels, numbered levels. It was super weird, because uh, it's, just, it's just not how Metroid games normally work. Uh, but because the levels were so enormous, it was essentially, in Samus Returns at least, it was like you were playing several, uh, like, non-linear Metroid games back-to-back. Uh, which worked really well. Um, 
it also makes the game like really hard to complete because there's just so much stuff in it. But it, it was fun. Uh, I think this is a, this is a tele like a travel room because it's purple. Oh, that's a hot room. They're going there. Yeah, it's a teleport room. Or a travel room of some kind. Oh, it takes me from Ataria to Kataris. Yeah, sure, I can go there. Oh, with the shuttle, I see. So yeah, this is a standard part of the Metroid genre, having these little elevators between the zones. Um, the original Metroid, Metroid Zero Mission, which is the same game, both had these elevator segments. So yeah, that's pretty standard fare for the for the series. It's good. Um, but yeah, I'm more or less done talking about Metroid Dread at this point. I think it it looks really good. And I'm really excited. Uh, I am glad I picked it up. The reason, like, it took me a couple days to get around to picking it up, I just wasn't sure if it would be good, but it seems to be. So <laughs> it turned out okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where they little thingies. Why are there so many little fire shooters everywhere? Who decided this was a good design decision? Oh, I've got more fire. Okay, I'm still- I'm just playing the game some more now. Uh, I'm just, I'll just see what this cutscene has to offer, and then we'll finish the video. <laughs> I like Metroid Dread. I like it a lot. Appears to be powered by thermal energy. Magna is pumped from the planet's interior and routed from there. I have located the central routing system for the magma. It is here in Cataris. Oh, Cataris, not Cataris. Samus, your current suit cannot protect you as you explore Cataris. The extreme heat of the lava is too much for it. Under no circumstances should you enter high temperature areas. I know the shuttle somewhere above here. Use it to find a path forward. There is one other thing to discuss. It is your new Phantom Cloak ability. The Phantom Cloak prevents the enemy from detecting you. Thus far, your only option was to run. Now, bypassing them is also an option. Use this to reach your objective. Note that using the Phantom Cloak severely decreases your mobility, and direct contact with an enemy will still result in capture. It is up to you whether to hold your position. Just be aware of your surroundings. The Phantom Cloak is useless once an enemy sees you. You will need to evade capture until it gives up pursuit. The Phantom Cloak can remain active after your aim has been depleted. It will consume your life energy instead. Consider it a desperate measure. Remember, it cannot drain your energy down to nothing. Judicious use of this technique will improve your probability of survival. Okay, I'm going to check in a save, and I'm just going to call that a video, I think. So yeah, um, this Metroid game looks super duper fun. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, oh gosh, level map? Oh yeah, I can look at the areas. So, it's kind of a similar idea to Samus Returns. Um, in that one, like in Metroid 2 and, and in that one, uh, there were a number of Metroids in each of the numbered levels, and you had to defeat all of them to unlock the next level. Uh, which made it very, very linear. Here, it looks like they're doing something similar, but with the Emmy instead. And when you defeat them, you also get new abilities. Uh, and also, there's a bunch of other stuff going on as well, and the, the areas themselves are not uh, linear, linearly, linearly arranged, and it's cool. <sighs> I'm just... I just... I, I really like this game. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. I do wish it had a difficulty selection because I didn't pick, I didn't change the difficulty or anything. There was no option for that. Um, some Metro games do have like you can play normal or hard. Uh, this one doesn't seem to do that, uh, which I think is not great because it is being proving a little tricky for me, and I am a bit of a seasoned player here. It would be nice to have a couple of different difficulty options, but oh, it's probably okay. Uh, I mean, they were probably going for a certain kind of experience, but the it would be nice to have a few more options, you know? Um, 
go back to the main menu and just see what other, what else is there, just to have a little look. And then we'll call it a video. Um, I... Oh, I see. I can copy the saves to different Samus files, if I wish. Okay, there's, there's not a lot of side content or anything. It's just the game. That makes sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, if this game interests you, you check it out and have some fun grading the Metroids. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird title. <laughs> Like, Zero Mission is about Samus' first mission, hence Zero Mission. Uh, Metroid, or Metroid Fusion is about Met Samus fusing with the X-Parasites, hence Fusion. Uh, Metroid Prime is literally about the Metroid Prime, which is like a, a, a super big Metroid that controls all the others or something. Um, Metroid Dread, I'm not sure if there's something called a Dread in the game, or if it's just... Well, it's a bit spooky, so it's Metroid Dread. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what I do know is this game's really fun. And if you really like these kind of games, like if you've played uh, Zero Mission or Fusion or Samus Returns or even a Castlevania game, because, you know, same genre, you will probably enjoy this. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good. I like it a lot. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!